is to say how Grammatron, as a project that I created between 1993 and 1997, really began my investigations into yeah, artificial creative intelligence, pure psychic automatism, the digital fiction making process, remixology, uh, et cetera. Uh, lots of other ideas there on the uh, margins too that are in, you know that I discuss in some of my more the experimental theory books. So when I when I started writing Grammatron, uh, the phrase came out of nowhere. I didn't know uh, where it was coming from. I'd like to keep coming back to that. And it was the uh, the opening words, which were interfacing, she said, you know, and then uh, talking about a a machine, a writing machine. And then the relationship between écriture, which is, of course, the French for writing, and a creature. And so, and then going back, this is in Grammatron, after saying that, it then says, écriture, a creature, a writing machine and then the first uh the first character you might say or persona or aci i now say 30 years later artificial creative intelligence uh in that particular story was abe golem right abe golem who was really kind of uh, looking out into a lot of looking words a lot of seeing words make themselves uh present in the, especially at the beginning of Grammatron, including the phrase seeing form, seeing dash form. Uh, Abe Golem, of course, is playing off Abe as in Abraham in the Bible and Golem, the Golem myth, which is part of the Kabbalah. And the idea of the recombinatory potential of all the letters to create a world, right? Letters somehow remixing to uh, create a world. And this is now, of course, something that's pretty prominent in a lot of scientific research into AI and creativity. There's something called computational creativity. There's something called creative AI. There's another thing called recombinatorial creativity. Um, I tend, of course, being an artist and, and a very experimental one at that, not to focus as much on the scientific, although I address it in the book because I think it's it's very interesting. Um, in in Grammatron, you see the seed for what becomes artificial uh, creative intelligence, but also this let's call it this desire, this desire to not explain it, but to play it out in narrative form, and in this case, very experimental multimedia hypertextual narrative form. So in looking at that, I was like, well, why was I, why, why was I so committed to leave, at least for the time being, to leave the book behind? Because I had a pretty good, you know, scene going as a, as an underground uh, novelist who had published a couple books. Why was I so keen on getting connected or reconnected with the technology in a different way to explore narrative form, you know, narrative form as seeing form, as ACI, you know, and, and these other issues you had mentioned, like like you know, remixology or the you know the fact that uh, Grammatron's investigation of the the figure, the persona as a writing machine, uh, relates very much to what I'm doing now. So uh, it's 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 you're absolutely right. It's totally there, and I and I realize that. It's not about the external, you know, instruments or technologies and experimenting with them just for their own sake to do something cool, you know, to be kind of like a creative technologist. That's never been really what I'm interested in. It may be, come with the terrain and I'm okay with it, but my focus is and, uh, and has always been to look at the role that um, technic and technicity plays. Uh, there's that phrase, the prosthesis I am, to really investigate the prosthesis I am, because this, this notion of an artificial creative intelligence and pure psychic automatism or becoming a psychic automaton, exhibiting non-human information behaviors as a way to almost spontaneously transform into the non-human in me, 
I think a lot of that goes all the way, all the way back to some of the stuff I was looking at in Grammatron and the notion of a Grammatron, a a writing machine that could be embodied in human form. Mm -hmm.